Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining. It's time to grow online, diversify, and expand on the web. Uh, thanks again for joining. On behalf of Shop and Tori and Shopify, we are very happy that you are here. We know there's a lot of things you could be doing right now, and the fact that you're going to be spending the next hour or so with us to go through this great content means a lot to both teams. So we have a pretty packed uh, webinar today, so let's go ahead and dive into specifically what we're going to be learning about. So the agenda, we're going to start with going over some introductions for our uh, uh, hosts and then our guests. Uh, we have a great guest coming uh, to speak with you guys today. She is a uh, merchant. Her name is Marlo Miyashiro. She is the owner, the co-owner and managing director of the Handmade Showroom in Bezel and Kiln up in downtown Seattle, Washington. She is a Square point of sale user and also a Shopify e-commerce user has been using both platforms for years and has been with Shop and Tori for over three years now. So don't wanna to give too much away. She'll come on to talk to you in a bit, but I just wanted to tease that because me some great content there. Um, so right off the bat, we're gonna jump into getting started with Shopify, um, what it looks like to succeed with Shopify through the COVID-19 um, uh, uh, issue. And then we're gonna go into online strategies for offline closures through Shopify. And then next after that, we're going to jump into that discussion with Marlo uh, from the Handmade Showroom in Bezel and Kiln. Um, next, we're going to go to Dave Carlson from Shop and Tori to go over what you should be selling online. And then after that, we're going to talk about e-commerce shipping strategies when you do start selling online. Uh, following that, we are going to talk about the importance of counting your inventory. And then we will be ending on a Q&A section for you to write us with any of your questions. So. As we are going through this webinar, you will notice on the bottom right hand corner of your go to webinar panel, you'll see a question section. If you click on that and you can send in any questions you want during the webinar, we will be either responding to those questions during the webinar with uh, chat or we will take them live. Um, either Dave or Marlo or Juan, uh, Juan from Shopify will take those questions for you. So if you have a specific question for a specific one of our hosts or our guests, please feel free to just address their name and we can make sure that that. Um, person is want to answer it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Dave Carlson to talk a little bit about himself. Thanks, Sean. Uh, yes, I'm very privileged to be here on this call and uh, thanks for our guests for being here too. And uh, I am the CEO of Shop and Tori and a co-founder. Um, we are actually having our seven year anniversary this week on the 8th. So that's exciting. And uh, we've been working with Shopify for about three years. We're excited to have them on this uh, call, and we're excited to have Marlo chatting about uh, how she uses Shop and Tori and Shopify and Square all together. Um, long story short is that uh, I'm an investor in software companies. I liked what uh, the initial idea was uh, that the other two co-founders came up with. And so I not only joined the company as the CEO, but I invested as well. So. There you have it, been doing it for, uh, like I said, seven years and uh, this particular company, but this is my eighth startup. And I'm very passionate about listening to uh, customers. I'm very passionate about seeing a problem that can be solved via software uh, and then having uh, building a software solution that will do exactly that. So uh, Shop and Tori is uh, handling this uh, rather complex problem across multiple different channels uh, for managing all your inventory in one place. And uh, so happy to be here. And uh, we're going to hand this over next to Juan. All right. Thanks, Dave. Hey, everyone. My name is Juan. I, I realize I look quite different in that picture than what I do right now. But um, yeah, so my name is Juan. I work on the Shopify retail team as an account executive. And on my day to day, I help businesses anywhere between, or sorry, that have anywhere between one in 10 locations. My current focus is really just helping those brick and mortar businesses ramp up to come into e-commerce and then help them deploy immediate strategies for dealing with COVID-19. So I'm having these type of conversations with all types of businesses every single day. Um, Marlo, I believe is the next slide. Great. Hi. Hi, everybody. I am Marlo Miyashiro, co-owner and managing director of The Handmade Showroom established 2015 and Bezel and Kiln established 2019. Uh, we are located uh, inside Pacific Place Shopping Center in the middle of downtown Seattle, where our neighbors are luxury brands like Tiffany and & Company and uh, Michael Kors. 
Um, our mission is to elevate handmade by presenting a curated collection of gifts made by independent artists. Between the two locations, we work directly with about 150 artists from all over the Pacific Northwest area across the US and abroad. Um, I have been in the retail slash wholesale industry for about 27 years. And uh, that started with my own line of hand fabricated sterling silver jewelry. Um, sold that to about 200 stores and galleries all over um, the world, really. And uh, I'm, I was also the organizer for Etsy Rain. That was the Seattle Etsy sellers team for, I uh, did that for about 10 years. Um, we had over 1,500 members from all over the Puget Sound region of Western Washington. And we also produced a number of large craft shows as well. So thank you everyone for having me here. And I'm, I'm really excited to learn along with everybody today. Thanks. All right, my microphone's on. Great, so I just wanna start by saying that Shopify, um, you know, Shopify is, is really nothing without our merchants. So we understand how crucial this time is for all brick and mortar businesses that maybe didn't have an online store previously and are now trying to adopt to what's happening. And we, we're here with you. Uh, I know that, um, you know, for every business owner, ultimately, it's not easy to completely change your business overnight. And we understand that. So we have a lot of resources and we've done everything that we can in order to make this as easy as possible, which is what I'm going to do today. So Sean, I'll get you to go to the next slide. So first I wanna talk about getting started with Shopify. Today I'm gonna to go with signing up for Shopify, how easy that is, adding products, choosing a theme, connecting your domain, setting up shipping, and hopefully be able to start selling right away. Um, I am simplifying everything just so that uh, it is easier for you to digest and really, start to think basic so you can really have something tangible as soon as possible. Sean, I'll get you to go to the next slide for me, please. After that, I'm also going to be talking about three things that you can do as well very quickly to adapt to what's currently happening. So number one, that will be setting up curbside pickup. Two, we'll be incentivizing your customers that are uh, loyal customers and continuously buying from you to buy gift cards from you. And then lastly, some email marketing to introduce your current audience that you have that knows you from brick and mortar or from your brick and mortar presence to buy from you online. So I'm going to start sharing my screen with you. Give me one second here. Perfect. Oh no. Okay. Can you see? Sorry, and I'll get Dave or Marlo. Could you just confirm that you see the Shopify.com landing page right now? Yes, that looks right. Okay, perfect. Okay, so first um, I wanna show you a little bit of the back end um, and, and sort of get yourself familiar with this. So uh, as I mentioned, once you sign up for Shopify, you can sign up on our homepage. Sorry, I should actually put that really quickly here first. So you can sign up on our homepage. All you need is your email address. It's very, very easy to get started with a trial. Once you've landed on your homepage, the first thing that you wanna do in order to really do, be able to do anything is have products on your Shopify dashboard. This is by far one of the most time consuming tasks that is involved in starting an online website. However, and kid you not, I heard this for the first time very recently, I mean, within the first for the last few weeks, this has become something that more of, and more of our merchants are doing, but is they're using Shop Inventory to be able to transfer everything from their current point of sale system to Shopify. So Shop Inventory will allow you with the push of a button, kid you not, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is incredible, to transfer over all the information that you already have on your product pages. So if you have images already, if you have product description, cost, um, prices, vendors, collections, all those sort of things that will all be transferred over to Shopify. So if you can definitely take advantage of something like that, it's going to save you tons of time and it's going to get you 80% of the way there. So on the left panel here, you see home orders. We're going to go into products and then I'm going to just quickly show you what a product page looks like. 
So, um, by the way, if you don't use shop inventory, there are other ways, of course, to add products. So you can do them either manually or you can have CSV import onto Shopify. You'll just have to learn how to map the right fields onto Shopify. And it really depends on what POS you're coming from. Once you have all of your products on here, I'm going to show you this quick demo product that we'll use throughout the demo. So if your title, description, images, product type, collection, there's a lot of information here that you might be familiar with if you have a point of sale system today. So all of that information is really going to be transferred here. Okay. So once you have your products, the next thing is really picking a theme. So I'm going to switch tabs here and go to themes.shopify.com, which any of you can access today. I get a lot of questions all the time on how do I pick a theme? How do I know which theme to pick? And will that theme actually work for me? Will it convert well? So just know that we are here for you with, with helping you in that part of the process. We have um, divided our themes into different industry. There's also collections here. And then every theme that we have available for you to use has been tested by our team to make sure that it has high conversion rates. So we do have over 1 million businesses actively using Shopify today. And that allows us to have a lot of information on what kind of websites work well and how do they convert very well to ultimately help you do this very quickly. So I'm gonna go back to the admin dashboard. I'm gonna go back to the home tab. On the left panel under sales channels, I'm gonna to go to online store, which is a sales channel that we are going to focus on today. Conversation for later, but you can connect Facebook and Instagram shopping to Shopify, okay? So I'm gonna go on to the online store here, go to themes, and I'm gonna make a theme right from scratch with you just to show you really how easy it is. So you can either upload a theme if you were to create your own custom one, explore the Shopify theme store or use one of our free themes. So I'm gonna go explore free themes. I'm gonna select the boundless theme. This is one of my favorite ones. There is two styles included in the specific theme. I'm gonna to go to Vibrant and I'm gonna add this theme to our library. So I'm showing you a test store, by the way. So everything that you see, my team also uses internally for, for, for demo purposes. Um, in this case, we already have a live theme, but then we also have a theme library in which we're working on the background. So in the case that you wanted to launch something tomorrow with something very simple, but later on you wanna have a more complex theme, this is always an option. And you can be working and chipping away at that more complex theme while you have your more simple theme live. So here's a the theme that we just added. I'm gonna to go to, um, sorry, customize here. Once we get here, we're gonna have a plain theme, but we're gonna make this into something very quickly. Right off the bat, you'll see that here, there is some demo information that just comes with the theme and we're just gonna fill it all in. So on the left will be the sections that you can change. Let's first change the announce more more and let's make this into the shop inventory demo. Perfect. Maybe we'll add a quick logo here. Don't want to do that. Perfect. So there we go. Let's go back to the section page. Let's put in a picture here to look a little bit nicer. I'm going to put a stock photo in here for the purpose of this demo. And you can drag and drop it. So it is very easy. Or you can just go to your folders page as well. What happened? Sorry, give me one second. Let's go back there. Oh, sorry, guys. There we go. I apologize that this logged me out temporarily here. Okay, so we're gonna go back to themes. 
we're going to go to our boundless theme, which is what we were already editing. We're going to go back to customize. Okay, so announcement here. Let's just make this demo store. Going back, header, we had put a logo. I'm just gonna put it back because I really wanna show you guys just how easy it is. Perfect, so we have our logo, slideshow, go back to the image. I'm gonna put this image here, perfect. There we go. Let's change this instead of saying slide, we'll make it demo store. Perfect. Now we see that there's rich text here. So let's change that to say something about demo store. We made this really quickly. So I'm trying to show you that you, you really don't need any developing experience. You don't need a developer in-house. You can really do this and it's, and it's really that easy. I know sometimes it can seem very daunting to get started, but it's really made for you to, to for you to be able to do it very easily. So then that next we're gonna to go to feature collection. We're gonna select a collection. I'm just gonna go with closing here, select. This is gonna pick all of my collection, or sorry, all my product information from the collection called clothing and then automatically fill it in here, okay? I'm gonna go back to the section here. Maybe we'll add a feature product so that everyone who's familiar with our most popular product can, can start selecting that. So we're gonna to go to that anchor bracelet demo that I showed you previously. We'll press select here. And you can drag and drop section. So I'm gonna move this section up to right above the part where it says rich text, okay? And then we're gonna click save. So we have now saved this theme. Now we're gonna go back to the uh, admin dashboard. And now we have a, a, a functional theme that you could technically launch today if you, if you really wanted to, right? So I'm just gonna go to actions, preview, just to show you that really quickly here. So there it is. We have the store that we just made together, all the products. Okay, so next on that list on the slide that I was showing you was connecting your domain. So I'm just gonna do this very quickly because I'm running pretty low on time here. You'd be able to either, you have two, op or sorry, three options. You can either connect uh, on a domain that you've already purchased through another website. You can transfer your domain if you have another website provider, or you can also buy a domain directly through us, okay? Once you have all those three things, you'll wanna set up your shipping. So I'm gonna go to settings and then go to shipping. One of the most frequently asked questions that we get is, how do I know, geez, how do I know um, how to make sure that my shipping is, um, that I'm not overcharging or undercharging my customers, excuse me. So what I wanted to show you is that you can actually connect directly with different carriers here, and then Shopify will be able to give you um, the rates for shipping. You can also set up flat rates if you want, but we will also help you out with this. You can set up things like what is your your default package look like or your default box um, and then you can customize all this so just know that we have you covered uh, for when it comes to creating shipping labels okay um, on the next slide we have um, buying online pickup in store gift cards and email marketing so buy online pickup in store obviously it's something that's very important right now that's actually within the shipping settings so again, I went to settings, then I went to our shipping here. And then at the bottom, I'm gonna to go to additional delivery methods where it says local pickup. If you have multiple locations, you might wanna have different settings or different notification settings for each one of your locations. For example, instructions of where to pick up the item, how long it might take. So I'm just gonna to go to the LA store here, click manage the expected pickup time. If I selected curbside pickup for the LA store is usually ready in 24 hours. I could change this maybe two to four days, five days plus totally up to you. And then here I'm gonna customize the email that is gonna be sent out to the customer once the order is ready to be picked up. Okay, uh, next I'm gonna quickly talk to you about gift cards. So why do I talk about gift cards? 
gift cards uh, can be an easy way to incentivize those loyal customers that are buying from you bi-weekly or maybe monthly to support you as a business while you while you have closed doors and maybe they don't feel as comfortable buying online. So right from the gift card section under products, you can manage your gift card products and you can create different types of gift cards. If someone buys it, they're gonna get a digital email with a digital gift card that then you'll be able to manage from the gift card section which means that later on when they come use that gift card, you'll be able to search that gift card and see how much is uh, left on that gift card, okay? Um, next, let's talk about email marketing and then I'll show you what all of this looks like uh, for, for the customer. So email marketing can be a great way to reach out to your existing customer base. If you have a set of emails, you can also of course talk to them through things like Facebook, Instagram, whatever channel that you might have. But today I just wanna show you how easy it is to create email marketing through Shopify. Shopify has its own email application that you can utilize uh, for at no cost. We just recently released Shopify email. It's absolutely free until October 31st of this year. Uh, and then after that, you get 2,000 emails a month that you can send out at no cost. And then there's additional pricing tiers. So I'm just going to create an email. It'll give me different templates where I can pick from. I'm going to go to this feature product here. And then right on here, it's sort of a similar experience to what I showed you previously on the theme. I can start to really change things out here. So I'm going to go to retail general store. Maybe we want to actually add our shop inventory logo here. So maybe we'll go to select image. There we go. Shop inventory here. Okay. And then maybe we'll put, we are now open. Perfect. Okay. And then for the product, we will I'm just going to click delete here and then I'm going to add a new section. So click add product and let's go with that uh, beautiful demo product that we've been talking about the whole time. So the anchor bracelet, there we go. I'm going to click add. The image will load in a second. While that happens, I'm also going to add a gift card. Why not, right? We are launching a website for the first time. We know that people want to support us. They've been asking us for a website. So let's also select one of our gift cards so that they can buy it right off the email. And then maybe at the end, I can do a quick little thank you for continuing to support us. So you can add some text here, write it in here. And then from here, all of your subscribers will be on here. If you don't have any of your customer list on Shopify yet, you can easily import all of that list from MailChimp or whatever you've used in the past with a CSV onto Shopify, okay? So very easy to do. Now, maybe I'll just send this quickly as a test to my email and then show you right what it looks like. So, um... I'm gonna send that to myself. And then we're gonna go through the whole workflow of what the customer is gonna experience and how they can do local pickup um, or curbside pickup, okay? So while my email gets to my inbox, okay. So there's the email, we have shopping tour, we're now open online, here's the product. If I, and then everything else that I just showed you here, I'm gonna click on shop now. It's gonna go directly to the test store that we had been looking at. I'm gonna click on buy now. Now it's gonna take me directly to the checkout page. And then here I can either do shipping or local or buy online pickup in store. So um, I just went through that very, very fast. But I just want to show you, you can literally have your products over from shop inventory very, very quickly. Choose a theme, pick your best sellers, do some email marketing, and you can start selling uh, as soon as as soon as possible. Um, Sean, I'll get you to go back to the slide deck for me, please. Oh, I have to stop showing my screen. Okay, uh, real quick, 
last three points that I want to talk about is three things that you can also do um, to even give you um, just a better chance of succeeding when you launch online. So number one, try to capitalize on your current customer base that's already buying from you. You can use loyalty apps. We have an app ecosystem that you can utilize on Shopify to add additional features that we might not have natively. So let's say you want to have a loyalty program to reward your customers um, anytime they share one of your, uh, your Facebook or Instagram posts. This is doable. So that's something that you could try out. The second thing is updating your return policy. So if your customers are not used to buying from you online and they might be nervous doing so, just make sure that you update your return policy, maybe extend it and make them comfortable. You want to make it as easy as possible for them to trust this buying, uh, this online buying experience. And then the last one is elevate your customer service. We've seen a lot of shops um, offer for their customers just call us and we'll walk you through our different products that we have. Basically give them that live experience, but digitally, of course, um, that they might be used to through the store. So that's for me. If you have any questions at the end, you can ask. Uh, ask. Uh, next, I am going to introduce you to Marlo. As Sean said, Marlo has two different businesses, the Handmade Showroom and Bezel and Clint. She proudly showcases local artists and the shops look absolutely amazing. Um, hopefully she has some pictures for, for you. Also, my email is right there. Um, I'm sure that this will be available for all of you. If you have any questions at any point, shoot me an email, I'm happy to chat over to you, Marlo. Awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to figure out how to turn on my wrong button. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Marlon Miyashiro, and yes, I own the Hemi Showroom and Bezeling Kiln in downtown Seattle. Um, I really love that um, demo, by the way. I learned a few things that I need to try out, so thank you. Um, so. Like many of you watching the webinar, um, I spent a lifetime dreaming about opening my own store. In fact, as a little girl, instead of Barbie's dream house, I asked for Barbie's shopping mall. And uh, I used to go around my room and put little price tags on all the things in my room and make my mom come and shop with me at my little store. So, um, you know, these retail roots have been really, really deep. <laughs> The uh, the experience that I had with running my own line of jewelry and selling it to stores and also organizing the Seattle Etsy team, um, that all culminated in having the opportunity to open the Handmade Showroom as a pop-up store in the summer of 2015. Um, it was a temporary store. We had 35 amazing artists from uh, the Pacific Northwest Seattle area. And we worked with um, all of them on consignment. Uh, we found out pretty quickly that um, handmade actually can work in a mall. So in about four months, we transitioned to a full-time storefront. And today we have over 100 independent artists from the Pacific Northwest, and but also all over the world that we work with today. So um, we specialize in gifts for the whole family. Um, across 10 categories. And um, as you can see right now, I'm not in the store due to the, uh, the COVID-19 crisis, but um, we do have amazing work. Um, we have, so I have some of the stuff here that I'm getting on our website. This is um, a great small messenger bag by Larnie and Tita. Um, lots of pockets, you know, waterproof, great for Seattle. And um, in jewelry category, we have Christine Stoll Studio. She makes these amazing earrings. Those are um, vintage watch faces and uh, rhinestones there that she uses. Um, like I said, we have over 100 artists. You can find all of them on our website at thehandmadechillum.com, of course. And um, the, so for Bezel and Kiln, we actually had an amazing opportunity to open that store slash gallery uh, right next door to the handmade showroom. And that was in September of 2019 when we opened. 
Um, we call it bezel and kiln because uh, bezel is the ring of metal that goes around the gemstone in jewelry or around the crystal on a watch face, and kiln, which is the high temperature oven that ceramicists use to create their work. Um, we represent about 50 artists there from all over the world. Um, we specialize in art jewelry and beautiful accessories. Another piece here, this is a wonderful necklace by Calliope Jewelry. That is Moonstone and Chalcedony there on the bottom. Uh, yeah, her work is really beautiful. Her wire work is amazing. And um, we also have fine houseware, ceramics and things um, like this, one of my favorite things. This is a ceramic Kokeshi doll uh, by Jennifer Fujimoto um, from Seattle. It's a little container. There's a little rattle on the inside of the head. So um, yeah, super cute stuff. So as you can see, we are super picky about um, the artists that we choose. We have um, really the best quality um, work that we can find out there. And um, so far, you know, it's been working. It's been really great um, doing what we do. So um, when we first started our pop-up store, we worked with all of our artists on consignment. And uh, we basically kept track of all of the inventory with square point of sale. And uh, when we were that small, it actually worked out fine. But as we grew, we realized pretty quickly that we needed to um, find a better way of keeping track of everything and you might be in the same position too so you know we researched everything out there as far as inventory control and pos systems everything that was uh, created for small business we really tried to find it um, and what we needed was we needed a more robust system our uh, wholesale inventory was increasing, our consignment artist inventory was increasing, and we ended up at about 10,000 different products that we needed to keep track of um, across 150 vendors. So um, and we were also planning to open the e-commerce site. Um, we were planning that as well. So we needed something that would integrate with everything. Um, so we uh, took advantage of Shop and Tori's free trial in uh, 2017. And for us, it was kind of the best decision ever. We haven't looked back and um, that was that. Was that. Um, we now, we can quickly generate reports for all of our consignment artists about what they have in inventory and what we've sold. Um, we can keep track of our purchase orders for wholesale, keep track of incoming inventory. Uh, we do quarterly uh, stock takes, um, which is an amazing feature that you really, really need to check out. Um, instead of just manually counting everything, you're able to use a barcode scanner and scan barcodes on all of your things and have really accurate uh, reports on uh, what you have in the store. Um, and Shop and Tori basically is our main platform that we use to control all of the inventory for both of our brick and mortar stores and the online stores that we have for each of them. Um, for the Handmade Showroom website, uh, we were originally on a different platform, and um, again, we quickly outgrew that, and we had to find something that we could transition to, you know, like a real e-commerce platform. And um, we kept hearing about how great Shopify is from our colleagues and friends, and um, to be really honest, I wasn't looking forward to spending the extra money every month. To, uh, to put this thing together that maybe or maybe not would bring us extra revenue. Because, um, you know, it was hard enough keeping up with all of the stuff that was happening in the brick and mortar store. Um, but the reality was is that all of our customers were asking for the option, the option to buy online or at least to see what we had um, in the store um, to kind of get a sense of what it is that they might see. So we had to just do it. You know, we put the bullet, we kind of wait. I, luckily, I have a friend who uh, creates Shopify websites. So she put together the Handmade Showroom website and uh, we launched that in um, April of 2019. And we, then we opened uh, Bezel and Kiln and also launched the website simultaneously in September of 2019. So, okay, so at this point, you're probably thinking that 
creating this website and everything is going to be a really complicated process. And um, I'm just going to tell you my experience about integrating and how we manage the flow of creating listings for our website. Um, so at first, we decided not to do the full integration of our entire catalog on Shop and Tori and send it over to Shopify. And the reason was, and Juan mentioned this in his section, um, that we didn't have the photos and the descriptions and all of that stuff ready on all of our individual listings. So um, if I was going to give you any major tip, uh, I'm going to uh, re repeat what Juan said is to try your best to, when you're setting up your inventory list, have pictures, even simple pictures ready uh, and short descriptions. It doesn't have to be a lot. Uh, make sure that you, have, you figure out what weight you're going to be using to, to calculate the shipping costs. And um, that way, starting your website is literally just flipping a switch. Um, but for us, we decided to do uh, everything on individual listings and we kind of wanted to pick and choose which pieces we wanted to present first when we were first starting um, the website. So what we do is we create uh, the item and we add the photos into Shop Inventory. We add in the descriptions, uh, the different categories and tags that we want to uh, feature, uh, add it in the weights. And then when all of that is ready, all you do is you click over a toggle switch and that immediately pushes it over to Shopify. And those items are live on our website in like 30 seconds, maybe even less sometimes. Um, then at that point, we go over to Shopify, uh, we sort all of the product listings from new to old. So the things that we just worked on are at the top. And then uh, we activate the listings on our Facebook page and our Instagram page. Um, and then that way we can create shoppable posts on those two social media platforms. So doing all of that, so far we have integrated about 80% of our inventory from the handmade showroom on our website still working on more, and uh, almost 100% of the inventory on Bezzling Kiln. So um, the timing to start our websites uh, really couldn't have been better. We were already trying to survive a year and a half long massive renovation project to our building. And uh, so once that started really hitting us, we knew that e-commerce was something we just had to double down on and make it work so we could get to the other side of everything. Um, and then COVID-19 shut everything down in March of 2020. And um, right now at the time of this recording, we are maybe about 20 to 30% of our brick and mortar sales. Um, and it, that actually seems to be increasing steadily, almost daily. So we're pretty hopeful that things are gonna pick up more and things are gonna um, work out once we are also able to open our doors. Um, so, overall, we are incredibly grateful to have these platforms um, to help us keep supporting our artists and keep moving forward, and um, we're going to see where it goes from here. Um, so, uh, in closing, I just want to say thank you to Shop and Toy and Shopify um, for, you know, really being a part of making this little girl's dream of having a store come true. So thank you very much. Thanks, Marlo. I, I love the Barbie story. I did not know that. <laughs> totally I got to know true. you pretty well over the last week or so, but that's an <laughs> awesome story. Thank you. It's absolutely um, true. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm just curious a little bit. Uh, tell me, it sounds like you're using Shop and Tori to manage everything centrally. How is that working? Because you're using Square for the POS, and obviously we know that this is you know pre the current situation we're in right now. But obviously, if the store was open today, that's mm -hmm. what you're using for your POS. And you have Shopify, uh, you know, excellent e-commerce platform doing the e-commerce. It, it your look sounds like you're able to manage everything, um, you know, all three across from Shop and Tori. I just want to make sure that that that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, once we got used to actually being able to manage everything in one place, which I think is unusual because um, 
where as small businesses, we're so used to sort of cobbling together a bunch of different mm -hmm. things and having to go to different platforms all the time to manage this and that. Um, we actually had to get used to managing everything through Shop and Tori and getting it in our heads that, you know, any changes we want to make to anything, whether it's Square or um, Shopify or anything, we do it all in Shop and Tori. And um, to be quite honest, it saves us an incredible amount of time just having it all in one place like that. So no, that's, yeah, yeah, that's great to hear. And I know that um, one of the things that we work on hard for the e-commerce platforms, because this is not, we started in the POS space, but then supporting the e-commerce platforms, obviously they need weights and measures and they need photographs. Was it pretty easy to get the photographs, uh, you know, from Shop and Tori over to, to Shopify okay? Yeah, so the great thing is that, um, you know, I, I do product photography, so luckily I'm able to um, ah, have the expert, photos there. The <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really, it's nice. Okay. Um, but honestly, you know, I've seen amazing stores with um, photos just kind of from a phone, and that can be mm -hmm. uh, uploaded to Shop and Tori, and you can either have one photo, you can have multiple photos. I don't even know what the maximum photos are, but it's a lot. We usually use about maybe eight photos for yeah. um, a, part, a product. We handle a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like it, because it yeah. seems like you can yeah. really keep going, mm -hmm. uh, which is great because for online shopping, you really kind of want to show um, a product in the way that somebody would look at it when you're picking it up in, right. in store and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, right? So we do that. And um, it's all in shop inventory. So when we turn the little toggle on to make it go over to Shopify in our online store, um, that's it. Like I don't have to do any other organizing. You can drag and drop um, the photos in shop inventory to, um, mm -hmm. to to change the order of them, and that all transfers over to Shopify. So really, just a couple of you know turning on Facebook and Instagram and maybe. Uh, working with a couple of tags or something um, in Shopify, but that's pretty much it. I mean, everything okay. is instantly live. It's so great. <laughs> great. Yeah, that's fantastic to hear. Well, thank you so much. We'll, we'll, I'll get through my little piece here so we can get back to you and, and then, and our folks can ask you some questions. So All right, awesome. thank, thank you, Marlo. You. Yeah, I just want to uh, remind everybody, Shop Inventory basically helps, uh, you know, medium to small size businesses optimize their inventory. Uh, we are dealing with larger and larger customers, though, people with, uh, you know, one or two shops all the way, like Marlow, all the way up to people with over 100 uh, locations and uh, various e-commerce platforms or vans driving around or carts uh, on a boardwalk, things like that. So uh, central warehousing, uh, we handle all of that uh, for our customer base. And uh, we listen to our customers very carefully, as I mentioned at the beginning of this call. That's what drives what we do and how we do it and the timeline that we do it in. So we're super grateful for the thousands of customers that uh, we have. Uh, around the world and uh, we've been doing the best we can to work with them in these uh, difficult last couple of months but it seems like we're starting to come out of that right now so very uh, grateful for that um, identify what sells well and focus on those things you don't have to take everything as Marlo already mentioned shoot everything over to your e-commerce platform and it'll just seem overwhelming the time pick uh, whether it's 20 percent 30 40 percent of what's selling best for you and then take that and push it online and it's just as simple as a toggle switch uh, as was mentioned uh, from shop inventory to push it over to your e-commerce platform like shopify um, just keep in mind that certain products may not resonate online as well as they do in store um, if you are a tourist location uh, and you happen to sell bottles of water uh, and ice cream bars, obviously you don't want to be pushing that online. I know that sounds obvious, but also be thinking about uh, specific items that are more interesting to your online marketplace uh, and make sure that that's, you don't have things that are cluttering up uh, your cat online catalog. As I mentioned, start super simple. Don't throw the button to put everything out there all at the same time. I just can't recommend that enough. And then maybe week by week, you go and start adding another 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 products per week as you feel comfortable and you're making sure uh, that those photos are updated in shop and touring and that you're getting that all pushed over from the central location. Then start analyzing your sales, find out what's most profitable also, also uh, even before you launch, but also while things are going, because uh, you, your online pricing may need to be different, you can handle this in shop and touring, than what you are selling in your local store. 
Sometimes you have to be more competitive online. Sometimes actually the fact that you have a super unique product like Marlo does, putting it out on the web, you may even be able to charge a little bit extra for it uh, from that standpoint as well. Something to consider because those items are so very unique. Next uh, slide, Sean. So how are you handling shipping? Uh, offering free shipping is just um, you know, critical uh, in the current uh, you know, just competitive environment. So pick, make some decisions around that to make it super, super easy, less friction for your customers to check out at your store. Um, and you know, they, people typically want some free shipping level at some point, so whether that's $59, $69, $99. You have to figure out what it is you're selling, uh, what the average shipment's going to be for you to ship. You have to make a guess to start with in some cases if you're not shipping much right now. Uh, from your stores and then monitor and carefully track that and you can decide hey I'm going to go from 99 to 79 or while wow, I'm at 79 I need to go to 89 or 99 dollars uh, for an order to make sure I'm covering uh, you know my cost and in some cases though it may be worth um, absorbing a little bit of the cost of the shipment to get somebody pushed up to a specific threshold so you can make those decisions uh, obviously by analyzing the different uh, profitability of an order and the items that are most popular that you're selling. Flat rate shipping's a, a, an option. Uh, just say, hey, it's five dollars or it's ten dollars, no matter what you order. Um, not as popular, but it is an option, especially if you have something you know you just want to cover some minimum costs and uh, go from there. And then same day delivery is has is becoming a reality through lots of different e-commerce platforms, Postmates, uh, DoorDash as well, obviously on the food side. Postmates more on the physical, uh, you know, cost of goods sold uh, items to get from a retail store. But either way, people want to get things as quickly as possible. So letting people know um, the time it's going to take is also important for them to receive the shipment. Uh, so bottom line is remove the shipping costs as much as possible from the customer experience. Next slide. So one of the key things, extra costs, too high shipping, boom, right there at the top, tax fees, et cetera. So that is the number one thing by far for you to make sure you address and absorb into uh, your offering and make it as simple as possible. Next slide. So don't forget to count, plan ahead and make sure that you have the stock that you wanna sell online. Don't get yourself backed into a corner where all of a sudden everything sells in a few days while you're on the website and then you don't have in stock. So plan ahead, uh, make sure you have enough inventory and perform regular cycle counts to ensure your top selling products are always available. At least one cycle count uh, should be done per month um, and this will help save you a lot of time when it comes to your quarterly or your annual accounts. Uh, and it may be just a single category, it may be a specific, specific aisle or a specific area of your store or your warehouse, but make sure you're doing it. And use an electronic account service like Shopfintory has, where basically you're using uh, a Bluetooth wireless scanner, you're scanning right away, and the iPad or your computer is immediately keeping track of everything uh, that you're counting. And then understanding the cost of inventory is critical. $1.1 trillion, just think of that. Worldwide cost of inventory uh, distortion, including overstock uh, and being out of stock and shrinkage. It's just absolutely crazy, the inefficiencies that are there. And that is what Shopintory is addressing. Make sure that you don't run out of stock and make sure you also don't have dead inventory sitting in your store or in the back of a where corner of a warehouse. We're gonna make you aware of that so that you can make decisions about what to move. We're gonna help you know what you're making money on, what you're losing money on, when to automatic be reordering we have an automatic uh, forecasting tool that will help you with all of that too and reducing stockouts and overstocks can lower inventory costs by 10 percent uh, zebra the famous uh, scanning company uh, they did a, a retail a study on this and i have to tell you that we're seeing with our customers when they initially get started with us that number can be more in the range of 15 to 20 percent actually so Imagine taking that out of your inventory and turning it into cash. So how to count accurately and efficiently as we wrap things up here. Uh, shop, shop inventory stock takes will allow you to use that wireless barcode scanner that I talked about and just fly through your inventory so fast. It's one of our most popular features. Uh, and it can work with a wired if that's what you have or wireless scan guns. We have recommendations on our website that you can go and uh, click on and see what it would be to uh, easily add this 
to your internal procedures and the tools that you're using. So set up your employee workflows. Workflows require that an employee submit a stock take to a manager for approval before the count hits the books. Um, if you have a, a district manager, regional manager, store manager, assistant manager, somebody's doing stock takes, you want to double check things, make sure that you don't have inaccurate information there, a very uh, uh, obvious thing like, oh, it's supposed to be 54, there's 154 there, why is that? Uh, and you can make the correction before it gets entered. Uh, shop inventory stock take scanning is available starting on the shop inventory standard plan. We actually have a promotion right now that actually lets you do that on the starter plan just to try to help people out in these difficult uh, times. Jump over to the next shot uh, slide. Okay, so there we are. We're wrapping things up and uh, we're ready for some Q&A. Thank you again. Uh, and let's have Marlo uh, come back and Juan and uh, we'll jump on here and answer any questions that uh, people have. Great. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, good content there. So uh, I'm going to go, we have a bunch of questions that came in. So if you have any questions and you have not submitted them, please feel free to send those in right now. We'll make sure to ask them. And if we do not get to your question uh, live, we will make sure to follow up via email or a phone call from someone on our team. Um, also a consistent question we're getting is, are we recording this webinar? And the answer is yes, we will be, we are recording it and we will be posting it on YouTube as well as sending out to everybody here that is attending. So let's see. Hey, Marlo, uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with you. So a okay. couple questions for you. Um, do you use, uh, so actually, sorry, um, you said that you use the Square Point of Sale and have mm -hmm. been using it for a long time. What stopped you mm -hmm. from using the uh, Square Online Store and why did you choose Shopify? Um, so I did try the Square Online Store and um, nothing against Square, but it was really difficult for us to use. Um, and honestly, for some reason, it just kept crashing when I was trying to edit it. And it got so frustrating that I just stopped using it or trying to use it. Um, and But the other thing is that um, knowing that if we were going to go online, we really wanted a consistent platform that we could grow with. So we we had that in mind when we were out there shopping for different platforms. And Shopify was the one. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Um, one quick question for you, I think. Uh, how many templates do you, or do you have an approximate number of templates in the email feature? Mm, um, not exactly sure. I want to say there are 12 on our email marketing application that we have. However, there are a ton of other applications that you can yet utilize for email marketing. There's Klaviyo, there's Omnisend, there's a ton of others. So, you know, the, that's one of the strengths, uh, I think that, or not strengths, but really something that we can offer to every type of business because Shopify has so many merchants using the platform, everyone has different needs and we allow apps to work very well with Shopify. So you'll always find different options, different templates, et cetera. Great, thank you. Hey Dave, couple quest uh, questions for you back to back on our integrations here at Shop Inventory. Um, First question, do we integrate with WooCommerce? Someone is looking at that and they're just curious about that. And then the next question would be, um, do you, uh, do we as Shop Inventory recommend starting with the Clover catalog before Shopify or starting with the Shopify integration? Are there any sort of best practices if maybe someone is like net new to Shop Inventory and they have both Clover and Shopify? Yeah, great, great questions. Uh, thank you, whoever sent them in. Uh, basically, I would say that um, WooCommerce, one thing to keep in mind is that, um, you know, it's it's primarily for, on WordPress and there's a lots of different variables there. You go pick a hosting company or you host it yourself and there's all different kinds of patches and security things you have to be considering. Um, and so if you are super technical and you have your own technical team and they're going to run everything for you, which I don't think Marlo has, uh, but if they're going <laughs> to... They're going to run it all for you. It's something to consider, but I would highly recommend uh, Shopify or Big Commerce, for example, um, because they're uh, managing their platforms on a real-time basis, and there's not, you know, thousands of different variations of different plugins and add-ons that may have been added and that aren't being vetted or maintained uh, by a central authority, so to speak, like it is with Shopify, for example. Um, so. We have a lot of people that use WooCommerce, but it, I can just tell you from experience that it works best for people that have a lot of technical experience and acumen to be able uh, to, to handle it. 
Uh, great platform otherwise, but boy, I'll tell you, you better be technical. Um, on the other part is it depends on, in my mind, where you want to start as to where most of your information is. Uh, our recommendation from what we've seen historically is that you start where your uh, largest amount of data is. And if that's already on a Clover or on a Square, um, then fine. Uh, you, you pull that over into to Shop Inventory. And then as Marlo mentioned previously, you kind of massage that data and you the, the information that's in there and you uh, enhance your descriptions, you make sure your costs are correct, you make sure that uh, um, all of the, the SKUs and everything, uh, the UPC information is all lined up, and then you're ready to add anything you want to after that. So you can start with Shopify, bring it in and push it over to a new POS or to uh, Shopify's new POS system, by the way, that they just launched yesterday. Um, so I'm excited to kind of get my hands on it. I've been working with the, the previous version. Um, but so you can start anywhere you want to start, but it is makes the most sense just to start where the largest amount of data is and then go make sure that that's cleaned up and anything new that you want to add, anything that you want to add, any categories you want to create. There's just all kinds of hierarchies that you can create, all variants, uh, bundles, uh, modifiers. I mean, the list goes on and on. And just do it all in shop inventory because it's so painful often in other places or it doesn't translate at all. What's nice uh, is that in shop inventory, we've already done all the mapping for you. We know what it means in the different platforms and what needs to go where. Yes, can you try to figure that out yourself? Absolutely. I'm going to argue for uh, what shop inventory charges. We're going to save you so much time by not trying to figure that out yourself. And by the way, those things change sometimes from different uh, integration to integration. So we're always monitoring all of that and making sure it's all working properly. Fantastic. Hey, Marlo uh, and Juan, this, this might be a question for both of you guys at the same time. So it was addressed to Marlo, but Marlo, how do you uh, manage customer account, like the customer information between um, both uh, Square and uh, Shopify, and then Marlo, or, and then Juan, um, maybe you can tag on at the end, is there a specific maybe app that you uh, see used a lot when you're dealing with uh, maybe Shopify POS and Shopify e-commerce? So you can uh, let Marlo start to see how she's handling it currently. Okay, so um, for us, we really had to make a decision about where we were going to keep all of our customer information. And because we started with Square and uh, we had the, the most data there about our customers, um, we decided that for our uh, newsletters that we send out, and um, also right now we're doing our invoicing through Square as well, and um, we're kind of doing everything from that central location. Um, we do get information from our orders on Shopify that we transfer into Square. Um, but for us, we found out that um, our customers, um, when they get their receipts online, they are able to control the information that Square has there. And um, when we send uh, the newsletters out from Square, they're able to um, adjust their subscription there too. So um, right now that's working for us. I really don't have a lot of time to learn a lot of the other mail uh, programs and platforms out there. So um, we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. I guess that's the bottom line for us. So. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would just add that, you know, we have a point of sale system as well. So ideally you have one main platform for all of your customer information, customer orders. Um, and that includes also things like Instagram and Facebook shopping, all one centralized place. In the case you already have another point of sale that you're used to and you're not looking to change, there's a few options. You can always upload your customer information via CSV to whatever email marketing tool you're using or to Shopify directly. Um, I don't believe there are any apps right off the top of my head that I can think of that would just migrate customer information from POS to Shopify directly. So what I would recommend and what I've seen other merchants do is either you have uh, a type form on an iPad at the store where you're putting emails and that's actually directly going to Shopify because you know that's sort of a funnel that you're creating to bring those customers from in-store to online or uh, you could do a, a weekly uh, set of CSV where you know we've gotten 30 new emails this week let's put that over to, to Shopify. So totally up to you. Um, there are many options out there. 
Great, thanks both of you. Um, so we are coming up at the end of time. Dave, I'm gonna have one more question for you. And then I'm going to, I think we're gonna go ahead and let you close this out for the day. So um, Dave is, let's see, where did it go? There it is. Um, is Shop Inventory only a good solution for businesses that are brick and mortar as well as e-commerce, or can you use Shop Inventory for only e-commerce? Oh, wow. Okay, what a great question. Uh, yeah, that's the great thing about Shop Inventory is that we work across uh, brick and mortar and e-commerce all at the same time. So it doesn't matter uh, what POS system you're on. You could be on PayPal here. You can be on Shopify. You can be on Square, uh, Clover, uh, et cetera. And uh, we support all of that. Um, also, we'll mention very quickly that we're integrated with QuickBooks as well. Uh, so we can pull in all of your data and push over um, key information about the sales uh, on your on your in your system uh, right over to QuickBooks. So it's all seamless. So. Uh, the key thing for us is, is that we're seamless across all these different channels and we're going to be adding a lot of different uh, sales channels here later this year uh, for people to be able to promote their products on all from all from one platform so uh this has been a pleasure by the way thanks guys thanks juan thanks marlo been great stuff uh i know juan you want to mention here real quick your free trial oh sure um so right now we've extended our trial period from 14 days to 90 days uh, this this started, I want to say, about a month ago when COVID-19 really uh, escalated. So this is a great chance to get started. If you have any questions, I know my email was on a previous slide. Um, there's also a ton of resources out there for you. We have, real quick, something called Shopify Compass, which is a library full of videos on how to do things like product images, ads, how to set up the basics of your online website, and it's all free for you to use and access. That's great. And uh, so here's a listing of, of Shop Inventory, the different packages that we have. We start as low as $49 a month. That's just a single location, more limited feature set. Um, and if you go to our website, shopinventory.com forward slash pricing, you'll be able to see every single feature on a grid per level. Uh, most of our customers are really uh, typically minimally on standard, uh, our standard plan, and uh, more and more customers. Uh, we have a lot of people on our professional service as well. So if you have three or more uh, locations, that's where you're gonna wanna reside. Currently, right now, we offer a 60-day money-back guarantee. Normally, that's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So we wanted to make people feel comfortable in these difficult times, uh, not only to have the 30 days up front, and we have a normal 60 days that, you know, with basically without risk, but now uh, that uh, for the rest of this month, at least, is going to be a total of 90 days without risk. So 60 day money back guarantee. So you can do a 30 day free trial. Uh, just sign up at shopinventory.com and uh, we'll automatically integrate for you and bring all of these products in. And uh, we have great customer service. We're very passionate about that. You can go online and check all of our ratings and you'll be able to see what a great job we do there. We're passionate about making sure our customers are successful. So thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, Marlo, this has been awesome. Thank, thank you. you so much. It's great to hear your, your story of success, Juan. Thank you for jumping in here to help our customers understand more about how they can get online and grow their business with Shopify. Uh, there's Juan's email address right there on this last slide, so uh, feel free to reach out to him. And you can write to help at shopinventory.com and our customer uh, care and sales team will be there to help you get started uh, with Shopinventory. Wish everybody much success. Be safe. Be healthy. Have a great day. Thanks, Dave. Take care. Thanks, Marlon. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.